Hey guys, Omar here. And when I was at Sony's condo event this summer, Sony had a bunch of models come out. They even had dogs. <laughs> they had all these beautiful models for the photographers to photograph. And there was just this beautiful sunlight coming from behind them, giving them a beautiful rim light. Anyway, I'm shooting this beautiful model just with, surrounded by like a hundred other photographers. And all of a sudden this guy swoops in with this little octobox. At first I was like, why are you bringing Flash over here? There's like 12 of us. Why do we need Flash? Who's, who's the idiot? It turns out the guy had a continuous light. Uh, so it allowed all 12 photographers to, to benefit from that light instead of one person benefiting from a Flash. So the light he was using turns out is a Stella Pro Lights by a Light in Motion. Light in Motion is a lighting company from California and they make scuba lights and bike lights. The Weather Channel, I think, uses them. But they wanna get into the photography game. Uh, with the advent of mirrorless cameras and what you see is what you get, people that don't wanna use strobes and wanna use continuous lights, maybe you're a hybrid shooter where you shoot video and photography, continuous lights make sense to you, then this is a viable option. So let's take a look at the light. I'll do a little shoot with them, and then I'll explain who is this light for and maybe who is it not for. All right, so I got the portrait kit sent to me, which was fun to try out. It comes with this really nice case. See that there? Here's the CL8000, the 8000 lumen. You turn this little switch here and then you can go up. Pushing the up and down gives you big jumps of light or you can hold down to fine tune. A nice feature, it tells you how much time you have. So if your light is on full power, it tells you you only have 27 minutes. I use these already, so they're half cooked. Uh, but you can lower your power and raise your ISO if you're in emergency mode. So that's kind of a good estimate to have there. So between shots, your assistant can push the middle button and it stays on. So the light is ready to go and then you could just push it again and it stays at the same power. Now Light in Motion has partnered up with Ellen Chrome. So the uh, mount on here is an Ellen Chrome mount. You can get other adapters to put on your Pro Photo lights or a Bowens adapter light. Uh, I didn't use any of that, so I just use uh, the umbrella mount that it comes with. It comes with a Fresnel head. This will channel the light, make it a little stronger. The kit comes with the CL2000. This is a smaller, cuter light. It's got a different way to turn it on. Uh, it's got this sliding mechanism. I didn't like the sliding mechanism as much as the buttons. Now, at first the light was turning on in the bag when I was using it because this little switch would touch the side until I realized that it does have a lock on it. It does have a lock on it so that it won't slide in the bag or accidentally turn on. But like an idiot, I didn't do that. The kit comes with barn doors and also another Fresnel head to channel the light. There's also a filter kit. You can put this on your lights and also slide some filters in. And a little dome dude. All right, a little quick behind the scenes here using the Stella Pro light with a professional model. <laughs> And uh, here outdoors, we have a lot of light coming from the back. So if you're shooting natural light, this is a natural light shot here. It looks pretty good. It's great, beautiful natural light. But just to get something a little bit more dramatic, here's how it works. You take your exposure, you see how blown out the grass is back there. You take your exposure and you bring it down in camera. You can actually see in your camera uh, the exposure going down. And then you add your light. You can actually add how much power uh, you need. And with a bare bulb, this is kind of what you get here. I found that the bare bulb work best if uh, you shoot it directly on, so there's not any harsh shadows or lines. But what's great also with the lights is if you're a hybrid shooter, you can absolutely do video the same time that you're doing photography. So you can have someone doing video or you yourself can do video. So I actually like the light to be a little softer, so I put it in this uh, reflective umbrella, shooting the light in. You do lose a little bit of power, so you have to shoot your lights really close up, uh, but you get a little bit of a softer, nicer light, and I like this a little bit better than the uh, bare bulb, uh, just so that it controls a lot of those shadows that fall down. So this is more my style. <laughs> so next I wanted to shoot into the sun, uh, probably the worst conditions here. The background is really, really, really bright. It's not quite golden hour yet, and this is what you get. Your highlights are so blown out, uh, if you want to get the face, you know, uh, properly exposed. And I also found this happened at Condo as well, too. If I had the model without the, you know, Stella Pro light person <laughs> running around, then um, I had the compromise was I tried to control the background light as much as possible, knowing that I was shooting raw and that I could bring back some of the 
detail in her face. But it is greater to shoot, you know, with the background exposed how you want it, uh, and then using the light or a flash uh, to light up the person. So here, that's what we get here. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm adding a light after exposing to the background. I'm adding the light. And that's what I'm getting here. I'm getting the light to sort of fill in all the darkness that occurs from you, you know, changing your setting so dark. All right, so shooting with the continuous lights outdoors is pretty easy. It's actually a great way to even teach strobe and flash photography. So if you look at this shot here, this is a ambient of uh, my daughter's face. And what you wanna do if you shoot with the continuous lights or the strobes is you want to expose for the background. And that's this shot. You wanna make sure you have your background exactly the way you want it. And that's your first exposure, expose for the background. Same as continuous lights. Same as with flash. And then if you're using flash, you set your flash power, but if you're using continuous lights, then you just add them. Add them and bring the light as close as you need or raise the power to what you need. And then you have your two exposures. You have your background exposure and you have your lit or foreground exposure. And so this is the one thing I found that was a little bit limiting with the continuous lights is distance. The light had to be really, really close. You could actually see it in this frame here. And so I think for headshots outdoors, or if you do more three quarter or upper body, it's gonna work really, really great because you won't see the modifier or you have to Photoshop it out. But I think the results are um, really, really nice here. I really love this headshot. But to me, the most fun with the light was using it indoors, uh, setting up my humongous, <laughs> my favorite modifier, this uh, you know eight foot umbrella with a cover on top of it, and just seeing the light, seeing how it feathers, seeing how soft it is, is a great way for beginners too to sort of understand light. Or if you're instru an instructor showing how lights work, uh, this is a great way to do it. And then with the portrait kit, I have this little backlight uh, with the little barn doors. And with flash, I can never tell exactly what my light is doing with the barn doors. There's a bunch of test shots that have to take place. But here you can actually see where you want to, you know, set up the barn door. So I thought that was pretty cool uh, using continuous lights. And so here you have your light set up. And again, I could see this being great for children photography, for pet photography. Uh, and seeing, you know, what you see is what you get here. And uh, we were getting some beautiful shots with the lights. Now I found the rear headlight to be a little bit harsh. So I decided to put it in a soft box. Uh, and I found that this was just a little bit nicer, a little bit softer on the hair light. And these are the cool decisions you can make when what you see is what you get. Uh, you can kind of, you know, decide what lighting modifiers work for you uh, and what doesn't work for you. And so we had a really great indoor shoot here. Okay, so who are the lights for? So in my honest opinion, the lights are best for anyone, number one, if you're a hybrid shooter. If you are side by side with a videographer in your company, uh, or if you're doing hybrid photography video yourself, uh, and you have an assistant that's holding the light, shoot video, shoot video, 120p B-roll, and then do your photography with the same lighting, perfect. Second, anyone in a hurry, so sometimes wedding photographers have only 10 minutes with their couple. So instead of finagling with lights and a backlight and flashes, you can run around from location to location uh, without worrying about flash powers too much. Another reason is when you're shooting somewhere that you either have to get out quick. Uh, so maybe you're shooting at the Eiffel Tower and the guards are slowly coming <laughs> at you to kick you out. Next, I think it's perfect for anyone shooting mirrorless pro. Uh, what you see is what you get instead of shooting flash and then checking your flash power. Baby photographers, maybe baby photographers don't want to use strobes for their babies. Um, you know, they can mimic natural light using a huge modifier. Pet photography, I'm sure dogs love a strobe going off in their eyes, but uh, maybe continuous light with fine art pet photography. And teachers, instructors, instructors, and maybe instructors, instructors? People teaching photography and lighting, showing people how to feather light or moving light closer. And instead of shooting and then having a photograph come up, you can actually live show people what happens if you move a light around. You see me moving that light around there? If you're shooting a lot in full sun or you're trying to do things like high speed sync, I still think flash is a better option. Uh, my style of shooting is usually a huger modifier and there just isn't enough uh, power of light to sort of give you the light you need for that look. 
Uh, but if you do like a harsher light source and you kind of just want to point the light bare or with a tiny uh, modifier, there is enough light. I mean, I was shooting at, I think, f1.8, four thousandth of a second, two thousandth of a second, and this still was lighting up the shadows. Uh, you just have to get the light really close in those conditions. Uh, but a smaller light source isn't my look. But if you, if you have that like model -y kind of harsh, cool look, you're shooting fashion, then this is great. If someone's carrying this around with a tiny modifier or a beauty dish, it's going to work for that look. It's going to work great for you. All right, that was fun. I'll see you guys next time.